In news overseas, the top U.S. lawmaker defies warnings by China as she is expected to visit Taiwan tonight. In the meantime, one of the most wanted terrorists in the world is killed in a U.S. drone strike. All these and more in this foreign news wrap-up by Meg Luna. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to arrive late Tuesday night in Taiwan, defying warnings by China, which has threatened a forceful response to the visit. According to Taiwanese media reports, Pelosi is set to meet with Taiwan's president and other senior lawmakers on Wednesday. Ahead of this, there are reports of several Chinese planes flying over and warships gathering near the Taiwan Strait. Pelosi arrived in Malaysia on Tuesday from her first stopover in Singapore on Monday as part of her Asian tour. Al-Qaeda co-founder and leader Ayman al-Zawahiri, a sworn enemy of America and one of the masterminds behind the Sadat assassination and the attacks on September 11, 2001, was killed in a surgical drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan on Sunday. This was confirmed by no other than President Joe Biden. Justice has been delivered and this terrorist leader is no more. We make it clear again tonight that no matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. According to Biden, tracking Al-Qaeda chief's pattern of life for years was key to the death of the FBI's most wanted terrorist with a $25 million bounty on his head. India has reported its first death due to monkeypox. According to local reports, the victim was a 22-year-old man who recently returned from the United Arab Emirates and tested positive for the infection. Close contacts of the first fatality are being monitored as India accelerates its action against the monkeypox virus. Meanwhile, several bodies have been recovered after massive flooding caused by torrential rain in Kentucky, USA. According to state officials, at least 28 people died in one of the most devastating floods in Kentucky's history. As of now, some areas in the state are still inaccessible, while poor cell phone service is complicating rescue efforts. Meg Luna for The Nation.